Hey, what's happening guys? Thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. We got a here in my garage video today. Um, I'm actually getting ready to head out of town. My girlfriend's inside packing. She gets a little bit crabby when she's packing, so I figure I'd get out of here and get out, get out of her way. Um, so there was a huge ruling with the Supreme Court yesterday, and they overturned a case which I believe was called Quill versus South Dakota. Now, South Dakota seems to be one of the states that's always going after companies trying to get sales tax. I know they had another lawsuit with Wayfair, and I think they've had a couple others. So um, in a nutshell, what this means is up until now, if I'm in Illinois, if I sell products to somebody in Illinois, I have to collect sales tax because I have a presence here. But if I sell a product to a customer in California, I don't have to sell to collect sales tax because I don't have any presence or any nexus in California. Well, that's all been turned on its head. The Supreme Court ruled that um, states can force everybody to collect sales tax on their behalf, even if you're not within their state. So uh, there's 50 states, obviously. 45 of those 50 states have a state sales tax. Uh, 45 of those 50 states have a state sales tax. Five states have no sales tax at all. Um, so this doesn't mean states have to charge the sales tax, uh, but the Supreme Court has opened the door to them uh, charging a sales tax. So um, why this is such a headache for, <coughs> for merchants and retailers is it's not just 50 states that you have to collect for. There's also cities, counties, municipalities, you know, all this other stuff. So there are over 13,000 different tax codes. Now, um, I'll give you guys kind of both sides of the argument. One side of the argument is it's absolutely ridiculous to expect a small business to collect sales taxes at potentially 13,000 different rates and pay all these different 50 states, some quarterly, some yearly. And this stuff is a, a pretty big fucking headache. Like uh, I'm in Illinois. Um, some of the products that me and my partner sell, we don't have to collect sales tax on, but others we do. And it's a big headache. Uh, uh, up until recently, they told us because our, our volume for this one particular business um, was lower in Illinois, they said, okay, you know, you only have to pay yearly. You don't have to pay quarterly. Well, then at some point they said, no, you do have to pay quarterly, um, but we never got the letter. So now we're charged uh, a, a fine for not paying our quarterly. And we called up and talked to the guy. And he's like, yeah, you don't have to pay that. It's kind of a shit show here. Uh, but these states are very unorganized. It's not very easy to pay them. It's kind of a big headache. Um, but then on the flip side, I see a lot of people saying, well, who cares? eBay will just do it for me. Amazon will just do it for me. PayPal will just do it for me. Well, first off, you're counting on the fact that these companies will want to take on the liability and extra work of collecting it for you. And then you're also assuming that they're going to calculate it right and they're not going to have you paying too much money. Uh, there is a, a program or a software out there you guys may want to check out called TaxJar. Uh, TaxJar basically will um, figure out what you owe in sales tax for all 50 states. And if I'm not mistaken, it will actually remit the payments as well. I haven't personally used it. I haven't felt a need for it. But moving forward, um, I think that will be something that we have to look into. Um, here's one funny thing about like uh, sales tax and why, why I think it's... Uh, well, why I think this whole thing is kind of a farce or a sham, uh, for lack of a better word. So uh, government and even just people, I hear people say, well, it's not fair that online retailers have this advantage over brick and mortar retailers. Like, I know, I'm sure some people do try to take advantage of no sales tax, but to me personally, I just don't care enough to spend any extra time or extra money to try to avoid a couple dollars in tax. I remember like years ago when e-commerce was still kind of new, I remember my dad was gonna buy a TV out of this company out of New York because it was gonna be like $150 cheaper in taxes. But I mean, now big companies like eBay, or I'm sorry, big companies like Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, because they have a presence in all states, even if you buy something from them online, because they have a nexus in every state, pretty much everyone is already having to pay sales tax anyways. So really the only people skirting the sales tax, for the most part are kind of small businesses who don't have presences everywhere. I know Wayfair is a big one because Wayfair um, has strategically tried to keep a nexus out of a lot of states so that they don't have to collect sales tax. Amazon's been battling this stuff for years. Uh, I've heard a lot of people saying it's kind of unfair that Amazon got this big head start or jump on everybody else uh, with the advantage of not having to pay sales tax. And now no one has ever, you know, I don't think anyone's going to be able to catch Amazon anyways, but especially now nobody's going to be able to collect Amazon. In terms of this whole argument about, well, it's not fair, it's not fair, we have to level the playing field. Taxes are, I mean, for, for products like liquor and cigarettes that are taxed very high, like yeah, plenty of people from Chicago will drive down to Indiana and buy their cigarettes or whatever. But I mean, for your average product on a 7% sales tax, if you buy a $20 item, that's like $1.40. Now, 
Most sites besides Amazon don't offer free shipping. So if I'm ordering something from out of state and have to have it shipped to me, even if it's a phone case or a screw or some, some kind of part, something that's really light, I think the minimum USPS first class mail that you can have shipped is $2.63 or $2.68. So if you're buying something out of state to avoid sales tax, but you're paying shipping, you're paying more than you would have paid in sales tax. So I don't really think that there's this huge advantage to not paying sales tax, except maybe on big ticket items. Uh, but I'll give you guys an example why, why brick and mortar retail kind of sucks. And I, I realize that they have more expensive, they have employees, uh, they have a building, they have to keep the electricity on, all that type of stuff. I get it. But I'll tell you what, yesterday, because I'm going out of town, yesterday I had to go get uh, a couple new uh, dog leashes and dog harnesses uh, for my dog. So I got some friends watching my dog along the way. And uh, I went to PetSmart for like a Chihuahua's, you know, my one dog's bigger, he's here, my other dog's already uh, staying with a, a girlfriend of uh, uh, mine, my girlfriend. Um, but for like a little Chihuahua uh, heart, like chest harness, they wanted like, uh, <coughs> I think it was $39 for one particular one. I think I found some like maybe $24. For a leash, they wanted like $29. On Amazon, I bought the same, if not even better quality harnesses for like $8. Um, does it cost money to run a brick and mortar store? Absolutely, it costs more than it does to run a retail or uh, an e-commerce store. But does it cost that much more or are they kind of price gouging? Um, I wound up going over to Walmart, which was just two stores down, and I wound up getting a harness for, I don't know, 12 bucks and a leash for nine bucks or something like that. So yeah, I found it cheaper, but I mean, that's why brick and mortar stores can't compete because they're charging insane prices. It has nothing to do with sales tax. Um, I, I would gladly pay the sales tax if they were at least somewhat competitive um, with an e-commerce store. So um, what are these laws gonna look like? Well, we don't really know. Now, potentially Congress could come in and I think they might be able to say that states can't charge sales tax or I would love to see if they did some kind of national, actually, I, to, to be honest with you, I wish we would go on like a fair tax system where income tax, death tax, all these other nonsense taxes are wiped away and there's just like a 24% uh, almost like a VAT tax on everything. I think that would be a lot easier for people to, uh, to keep track of. And then poor people or people living at the poverty line would get a big chunk of that back at the end of the year because they're the ones uh, most ad adversely affected by that. Um, but that would be so much simpler. There's no reason our tax code has to be like 15 feet high when the pages are stacked. There's no reason, you know, all this money is wasted on people paying accountants all this money to try to work around our current tax system. Why not just make the thing fucking easy to understand? Uh, what else is kind of troubling about this is a large percentage of small businesses or new businesses wind up going out of business because of taxes. They don't plan for taxes and things like that. So this almost puts another heavier burden on them. This really isn't going to help brick and mortar. This is a money grab by the states. It has nothing to do with leveling the playing field for brick and mortar retailers. Um, what I think would make sense to do something like products under $100, you don't have to charge sales tax on because it's really like at that point you're not leveling the field for anybody i get on like a high ticket purchase it's a decent amount of money but like products under a hundred dollars make them immune from state sales tax and, and really kind of uh lighten the burden on, on small e-commerce sellers but uh i will I, I gotta dig into this a little bit more it's it's a really confusing and complicated issue um i'm actually like i said just getting ready to head out of town here um I had to get my dog set up here and go pack and everything else. So I didn't have a ton of time to really prepare for this video or research this video. Um, I will be making another follow-up video as I delve in a little bit deeper and get a little bit more information about what this is gonna look like. Uh, just to give you guys an example, the state of South Dakota, what they have is you don't have to pay sales tax, so they're trying to make sort of make a little caveat for small-time businesses. You don't have to pay sales tax if you do either under, if you do under 200 sales per year in their state, or under $100,000. It's not both, it, it's one or the other. So if you do over 200, you gotta pay sales tax. If you do over 100 grand in sales, you gotta do sales tax, you gotta pay sales tax. So I get that they're kind of trying to help out small sellers a little bit, but I mean, that's really not a ton of money. Um, and you know, you can do 200 transactions and still be a very small business. I'm sure some like Etsy sellers and eBay sellers go through this. Uh, a couple other complications I see with this, um, on eBay, is eBay gonna make me collect sales tax on used items that I resell? So I've already paid taxes on my income that I earned to go buy a backpack. I used a backpack for a year, I go to resell that on eBay, and now I'm paying sales tax again on an item that I've always, or 
Now I'm having to collect sales tax on somebody else buying an item that I've already paid sales tax on the item for. And that money is also, I mean, now we're getting to a bigger issue, but that money's also been paid taxes on in the form of income tax as well. Um, another thing, like there's something called reseller certificates where if I'm in the business of reselling and I buy things, <coughs> when I buy my wholesale inventory, I don't have to pay sales tax on it because I'm gonna, because someone is gonna pay sales tax on it when I resell it. Well, not all states will accept out of state reseller certificates. So potentially if I buy stuff, I think California is one that doesn't. Potentially if I buy products from California, I'm having to pay sales tax on that. And when I go to resell it to my customer, I'm also gonna have to charge my customer sales tax. So in that sense, California is kind of double dipping on, uh, on that sales tax. So there's a lot of kinks to work out, a lot of issues. Uh, this is really gonna stress out a lot of small businesses. I hear a lot of people saying, well, Shopify will do it for me. Guess what, Shopify has nothing to do with, with you collecting payments. Shopify is simply a website builder. You might be referring to Shopify payments, which is actually run by Stripe. Maybe Stripe will help figure this out for you. Maybe they'll re remit the payments for you. Keep in mind, even if somebody will figure out what you owe, you still have to get a tax number with each one of these states and actually send out your payment. Like I said, I haven't personally used TaxJar yet. Uh, I will link to them in the description box below. That's one thing I'm looking into. And supposedly, they will not only figure out your sales tax, but they'll also remit it to the states for you. Um, if states all start um, putting in sales taxes, I think it would make a lot of sense to do, uh, to use. Um, what I think would make a lot more sense is doing some type of national uh, tax. So it's a flat, you know, 5%. Nationally, the federal government uh, collects it and then redistributes it out to all the states. I mean, I think that would alleviate the burden on sellers to where you have one organization to deal with and one number to keep track of instead of 13,000. But I don't know, at this point, I'm just rambling. Um, big news here, I'm gonna dig into it a little bit more. I'll bring you guys another video about it. Let me know your thoughts on this issue. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Uh, anyhow, guys, I gotta get running. I gotta go pack and stuff, uh, but I'll catch you guys on the next video.